Alrighty guys, today I'm going to be taking care of something on the ugly truck that has bugged me ever since I bought it way back in like January, I think, of 2020. Um, so nearly two years ago, I've been, this is a project truck. I don't drive it every day, but I just rebuilt the transmission. It's a turbo big block and it's got a 4L80 in it. And I just went through the transmission and now I'm trying to put a couple hundred miles on it just to get the trans kind of broken in and do a fluid change and all that stuff. Um, and because I have been driving it a lot more, I've been staring at a big, massive hole in the dashboard and it's been bugging me for a long time. But just recently, I actually got a whole bunch of parts to take care of it and give the interior of this 2000 Silverado a nice refresh. So the biggest offender is definitely the dash top. This truck came from Louisiana, um, spent a lot of time, probably its whole life in the sun. And as you can see, there's a big chunk missing there and there are several other cracks in this dash top. So um, I've got one and we're gonna replace it. But I also grabbed more or less an entire interior from a 2001 Yukon Denali. And that's where I grabbed the instrument cluster from. But I also grabbed, you know, the leather seats, the full length console, the little trip computer, a CD changer, uh, some of the stuff I'm, I'm going to use, some of the stuff I will not. I grabbed some new door panels because these rattle like crazy. The little pocket down here is kind of loose and I had to actually like staple on this cloth because it kept pulling back. So we get some door panels, leather seats, the whole dashboard assembly, the little bezel that goes around the radio. Um, in fact, the 120 mile an hour cluster that we got in here is also from that same Denali. Uh, the seats, I'm kind of debating whether or not I should keep these because they're cloth seats and the front and the back actually match. And the leather seats that I have are a similar tone, but we'll have cloth and leather and that might bug me a little bit, uh, but at least we'll get the whole dash on the console swapped over. And I might even have time today to try to wire up that little trip computer because I think that would be just really slick if I had I think it just shows like mileage. It shows um, fuel mileage, distance, time, and a few other pretty useless things. <laughs> but it's kind of cool to see. So anyway, um, let's get to work by tearing out this old broken dashboard. So more or less, once you get all the surrounding stuff away from the dashboard, the last thing you gotta do is get this grab handle off right here. Uh, and the trick is you just gotta pull these vents out right here. And there's actually a little button that's kind of like right up inside here. Just kind of push the button in and pull out on the grab handle. And that is all you gotta do to remove it.
All right, so teardown is complete and I have everything cleaned up and we're kind of ready to start putting things back together. I just wanted to go over all the stuff I took out and what we're going to be swapping. Uh, the complete dash top, obviously that was cracked and damaged. I did leave the airbag in, although I do have the Denali airbag. I'm pretty sure they're like the same exact color. So just as long as one hasn't like faded dramatically, uh, we'll just leave the stock airbag in this truck, not a big deal. We did have to take out the glove box and the little center panel thing that kind of run right along the bottom here because the Denali console actually attaches a little bit differently than the Silverado console. You can kind of see the differences between the two here. This is the Silverado uh, lower dash trim. It has the ashtray and the three 12 volt outlets right there. The Denali does not have the ashtray and the flip up door and the bracket is riveted onto the center right there. Um, so make sure you get this whole piece if you're going to be swapping out to the Denali center console. Um, that is the part that goes under the steering column. I do have that one from the Denali, but I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. Uh, we cut the old busted up dashboard down here. There's like one half of it right over there. And pretty much, like I said, we're ready to start putting back together, but I wanted to talk about one of the electronic changes that I'm gonna be making just because, I mean, I like gadgets as much as the next guy, so I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to install some cool stuff that they put in the Denali's that they never did in like the base model Silverados. And the main part of it, we got three things right here. One is the stereo. This is a Bose stereo that works with the amplifier that's in the center console here. I'm actually not going to be using this, but I do have it up here just for a reference because um, we'll get to this part a little bit later on. But there's actually this pin out here. It's labeled. You can see one on the top left, 10 on the top right, and then it goes 11 to 20 on the bottom. So this here is basically just a pin out reference. Not going to be using this because I don't want to bother to wire up the amp. And I don't, I want to get a stock radio because I don't like the aftermarket ones, but I want to grab one of those modified ones they have on eBay that has like the little auxiliary input up here. Anyway, um, we're not going to be using this. Um, we do have the stock CD changer from the Denali. And ultimately, I think what I'm going to do is, because I don't listen to CDs anymore, I'm going to gut this thing out and use this frame as the basis for a storage pocket. But um, the cool thing about this is it takes this little connector right here. My truck is an LS model, I think, and it actually has on the factory, um, this might have had a cassette deck in it, but this is the plug right here that would actually plug into that CD changer. So I'll put it in for now just so it lights up and turns on or whatever, but um, it's not connected to that radio. So uh, this will be plugged in for now until I modify this and turn it into a pocket. But the one thing I really want to install, and I think it's just kind of a cool gadget, is this guy right here. It's called the DIC Driver Information Center. And it's just like, it'll track your fuel mileage, your trip meter and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, but there are seven pins that you need to wire up to get this guy working and it mounts kind of like right here in the Denali console. So it's kind of cool, it looks factory and we can easily get it working just like factory with seven total wires. I'll kind of go over those really quickly. Um, if you want, just kind of pause the video right here and take a look at this. And I'll kind of give you the, the way I've got this coded out. On this side, these are the wire colors for the harness for the DIC, and these are the pinouts labeled by GM. So pins B, D, E, and so on. Um, this is the function of each of the wires, um, RAP, that's retained accessory power. And the one thing you'll notice here, um, well, jumping ahead, but um, this column right here, you see all these have R, you know, R7, 10, 16, 9, and so on. Um, these are all pin numbers, actually, for the connector that's on the back of the radio, this guy right here, and you can easily see it with the dashboard out. And that's actually one of the easiest places from what I've seen to get all the different uh, wires and functions that we'll need to make this DIC actually work. Uh, you can get this information from anywhere. Most of the wires are just grounds and illumination and switched power and things like that. Really, the only two critical wires that you need to make this work are the vehicle speed sensor, which actually, believe it or not, has a signal being sent up to the radio because a lot of these early GM radios used a speed sensor to kind of adjust the volume. They have that speed controlled volume setting. So anyway, um, that doesn't work with my radio I have now, but the signal is still there. And the other critical thing to make this happen is the um, class two serial data that GM broadcasts. And we'll get that just from the right behind the uh, OBD2 plug that's right underneath the dashboard. Other than that, 
all these plugs are going to be right on that radio connector. Now, you will notice the blue asterisk. Uh, we have green wire in position H, retained accessory power. And then we have pink 12 volt ignition, both going to radio connector number nine or pin nine. And the reason why I put that there is because retained accessory power and a switch 12 volt do pretty much the same thing. In fact, when I double check the wiring on the radio, um, this is only specific to 99 to 02 Silverados, by the way, the 03 and up did not have a switched ignition lead. They all use CAN bus switching. But anyway, on the 99 to 02 Silverados, I actually have on my little aftermarket radio connector here, um, the, I forget which one it is, I think the pink one that's on the bottom, that's actually connected to retained accessory power, but that functions pretty much like a switch 12 volts. So basically when you turn the key on and you turn, you turn the key on, um, it sends 12 volts to it. And the only difference is retained accessory power actually stays powered up. Like say if you shut the key off, but you leave the door shut, it'll stay on for like another couple, two or three minutes. Um, so anyway, basically I think I'm going to just try to tie the two of these together because there is no, in the radio connector, separate 12 volt switch from the retained accessory power, or at least not that I've seen. So for now, I'm just going to have those two tied together. Um, there is another, let's see, pin F, orange one, that's battery power. So as long as it has battery and a switched ignition, I think this thing will work just fine. And like I said, the other two, uh, the vehicle speed sensor, that's pin G. And then the serial data, that is, let's see, pin D, yellow. Um, so I'm going to, I cut apart the stock harness. I made sure to get all that stuff when I pulled the, Denali, the Denali, ugh, excuse me, apart. And this is kind of the stub harness here. Uh, uh, this went from this guy to a big connector, but because I needed a little more wire, I just cut a few more wires out of the remaining part of the harness. So I'm going to start with this thing, lengthen a few wires so I can have enough room to get back up to the radio. And I'll just do a quick test of it to make sure it powers up and things like that. Um, and then I'll just kind of give you guys an update at the end of that to make sure that all the wiring that I've just told you actually functions, because this is all based off of uh, some schematics and stuff that I found online. So anyway, uh, that's a whole bunch of information about wiring. Um, oh, a few other things. I actually did epoxy on these little clips on the front of the uh, dash cover here. And a lot of these break, like on my step side, I'm sure just about all these are cracked off and the dash just kind of rattles up and down as you drive. This one actually, there's only, I think this one was broken completely off. And the other, there's one in the middle, I think it was like hinged, one of them was cracked. Cause they just have these little clips that kind of bite into this plastic ridge. So anyway, just to kind of reinforce everything, I took some two-part epoxy, just kind of squirted it down in here to hopefully prevent these from breaking again, to give it a nice strong place to mount so we have no vibration. Um, but yeah, that's the nice dash pad right there. The only other thing I had to epoxy, uh, this is the little uh, glove box, the little stop thing here actually had cracked off. And luckily I found it, it had fallen down in the console glued that back together. But now we are ready to continue assembly, get the wiring done, then we'll put the interior back together.
All right, so we got all the wiring taken care of and I did a quick function test. I turned the key on and everything in the DIC seemed to power up and do what it should. Um, although until we actually take the truck for a quick drive, we're not gonna know if it's actually gonna record the data properly, but I'm pretty sure that it will. Uh, one thing I did notice that is gonna bug the crap out of me until I fix it is there's a couple of buttons that the illumination is not working on. Um, so I can either pull this apart. There's, there's three bulbs I actually already checked. Um, the bulb over here is working for these two buttons and the bulbs for these four on the end have been burnt out. So at some point I'll have to get that taken care of, um, but at least now it'll plug in and everything will kind of work. The only deviation I did from what I originally showed you was uh, pin B, the pink switched 12 volts. Um, instead of sending that one to the retained accessory power with pin H, I decided to find a new circuit on its own and on the body control module, brown connector, pin B2, there's a pink wire, which actually matches up. That is a true switched 12 volt. So I just grabbed it from there. Everything else I wired up exactly like I'm showing you right here. Remember R is for the radio uh, plug and then uh, DLC, that's the data link connector, just the OBD2 uh, plug under the dash. Pin two is where I grabbed my data from, and then BCM for switch 12 volts. Anyway, um, that should be all working. I did also make a few other changes to the harness that runs and sends power now into the uh, console. It used to just power the three little 12 volt outlets. Um, I have one that goes way back here because there's a plug inside the console. This one here is gonna kind of sit up on the dashboard for uh, this connector right here. And then finally, this funky looking plug, it's different than the rest. This I uh, harvested from the Denali console. That's actually gonna send power into this little uh, part right here. So you can see that plug right there mates up to it and that splits off and it sends power to the cigarette lighter there. And then there's actually a light inside the console right there. And um, you guys can see kind of how nasty and dirty this stuff is. The console here actually used to be that dirty. I just spent a little bit of time this morning cleaning it up. Um, so it looks much, much nicer. This is where the uh, other cigarette lighter or 12 volt power supply is gonna go. There's two more back here even. I just, I decided not to wire these up because I just, I mean, we've already got three power points, uh, five, I don't, I don't think I'm ever gonna really use five individual power points. I mean, I've got the radio with the USB. So if I have my phone plugged in, listening to music, that'll charge the phone. So I have the phone plus three other sources to get power from. So even if I have the passenger with the phone and we're doing like a race week sort of scenario, um, we'll have plenty of power everywhere for everything. So anyway, that's all the wiring taken care of. I think next I'm gonna just get the console sort of plugged in. Next I'll work on the dashboard. Uh, and then we're kind of in the home stretch. All we got to do after that, swap out the door panels and we are on our way.
All right, guys, so that is a wrap. The interior upgrades are done, and this thing looks so much better. And I think my favorite part is just the fact that the dashboard is now all in one piece. There's no cracks, and it doesn't rattle when you drive it down the street anymore. That was kind of like one of the most annoying sounds that you could hear on the inside of a truck. Uh, also, I love the new center console. It has a nice kind of sleek, stylish look. I do like this little kind of gray metallic color they have on there. I did take the uh, cup holder in the house, I just put it in the sink and I scrubbed it with a brush and some Dawn dish soap. Got all that nasty gunk and junk out of there, so that's awesome. And also because I glued that little catch on the back, now it'll actually stay closed, unlike what it did before. Uh, the front, I actually, there's a removable ashtray pocket in there, I just kind of leave that out because I don't smoke and it just gives me a little bit more room for whatever. Um, uh, the CD player does not work, but that's okay because I didn't really plan on using it. Um, but the harness that actually connects that to the radio uh, is just a one-piece jumper that kind of goes from one to the other. And I was thinking maybe the little uh, CD changer harness was at least like connected to the rest of the truck for like power and grounds and lighting but it's just totally separate. The head unit basically just goes directly from it down to the CD player, not a huge deal. I am gonna be getting a, uh, this is a single DIN opening, and so I have a replacement pocket coming, and I actually, I'm gonna cut this apart and use the metal shell because there's no direct replacement pocket for that CD changer, but um, I am gonna cut apart this for the frame and use the plastic insert for the pocket. Uh, everything else should be working as far as our little 12 volt outlets. I did even take the truck for a drive and the little um, trip computer and fuel mileage thing that seems to be working. It shows the instant mileage. You can scroll through all the different options and stuff like that. No idea how accurate it's, go it's going to be, but at least I know it's working. It's picking up you know, all the information that it should. And in theory, as long as your speedometer is correct, you know, if you've changed things in your tune, as long as your speedometer is correct and as long as your injector information is correct, in theory, that computer should be fairly close Maybe, we'll see. I, I, I mean, I've honestly never measured fuel mileage on this truck in the first place, so I have nothing to compare it to, but I think it's a cool feature nonetheless. So anyway, um, yeah, that's a wrap, guys, and I'm loving how it looks, and everything is now in one piece. Um, the seats, I do have the Denali seats, but I don't think I'm going to be swapping it over. Number one, they're power, they have airbags on the side, where these are just kind of cloth and they're a, a mechanical adjust. But the main thing is they match front to back, and I didn't really want to have a mismatched set of seats. I have that in the Suburban and it bugs me. Um, and I actually kind of almost like the cloth a little bit better, and these are in pretty good shape. Although in the future, I am going to try to get a new um, foam cushion for the bottom of that one because it is kind of worn out. And then the last thing over here on the door panels, uh, same thing, I, didn't, I decided not to swap these out simply because they're, first of all, they're basically the same exact door panel other than this one has the Bose logo and this one does not. Um, this has just the cloth insert which matches the seats where if I were putting the leather seats in, I'd put this door panel on because this has the same color leather. And the Denali little script, that's kind of cool, but uh, it also has the buttons for the heated seats, which I don't have. And even if I did put the leather seats in, I probably wouldn't get those wired up. So anyway, um, this is kind of going to be wraps for the interior upgrades for now. Uh, you will notice like on that far door, the little speaker grill is missing. It's been missing on both since I bought the truck. Um, so I mean, I'm looking for that little mesh screen. And then the only other thing that I've got to find on the back of this trim right here on the extended cab right below the window, you can see that's kind of chunked out. Um, so those are really the last upgrades and this interior is, I'm not gonna say perfect, but it's like almost perfect. So I'm really excited for how this truck's coming along. Um, yeah, it's, I'm really glad I was able to find the interior part. So once again, thanks to Cole for letting me source those from the donor truck that he had. Totally transformed the inside of the truck. Now it's on to the next thing. So. Thank you guys for watching, I do appreciate it. Um, if you don't mind, do me a favor, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, click the like button, drop a comment down below. In terms of what we have coming up next, guys, I have I finally got the pistons in for the 547 build. Um, if you'll remember, we are doing a 547 big block for this thing. We have a, it was a 496 8.1 right now, but I have all the parts now for the uh, 547 stroker build. So I'll show you the pistons next time and we're gonna get the block shipped off to the machine shop so we can get all that done. 
Uh, and then actually what we're gonna start after I show you the new engine stuff, we're starting to build on the step side. I got a bunch of stuff, you know, we're talking cam, long tubes, full exhaust, you know, tune the whole nine yards. I'm doing it, I'm calling it like a budget muscle truck build. So uh, stay tuned for that guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.